Hi, in this module, I'm going to talk about constraint satisfaction problems. So before we get into constraint satisfaction problems, I just want to revisit where we've been in the course. We started off with machine learning and applied to reflex based models such as classification or regression, where the goal is just to output a single number or a label. And then we looked at state based models in which case the goal was to output a solution path and we thought in terms of states actions and costs or rewards and now we're going to embark on a new journey through variable based models um, it's going to be a new paradigm for modeling in which case we're going to think in terms of variables and factors so the heart of variable based models is an object called a factor graph um, we're going to define factor graphs formally in the next module, but for now, let's just try to give some intuition. So a factor graph um, consists of a set of variables, usually denoted x1, x2, x3. These are in circles. And a factor graph also contains a set of factors, um, usually denoted f1, f2, f3, f4. These are going to be in squares. So now each factor, as you'll notice here, touches a subset of the variables. And so each factor is going to express some sort of preference or determine the relationship that a subset of variables um, has. So for example, F2 is going to specify how X1 and X2 are related. And F3 is going to specify how X2 and X3 are related. And F4 is going to specify how X3 is, um, should be related. The objective of a constraint satisfaction problem is to find the best assignment of values to the variables where we're going to define what best means in a second. So let's look at an example um, of um, a problem that can be solved via constraint satisfaction problem. So here's map coloring, um, a classic problem. Here is a, a map of Australia. We have um, a number of provinces, um, seven to be exact. And each province, um, Western Australia, Northern Territory, South Australia, etc., cetera, um, has to be assigned a color. And the question is, how can we color each province, either red, green, or blue, so that no two neighboring provinces have the same color? So we don't want Western Australia and Northern Territory to have the same color. So here is one possible solution. We can color Western Australia red, Northern Territory green, and so on. And you can double check that no two adjacent provinces have the same color here. So now this is a simple enough problem that we can just solve it by hand. Um, but as usual, we want to ask what are the algorithmic principles or how do we come up with something more general to solve problems such as these um, when we encounter them? So before we talk about how we do this with constraint satisfaction problems, I want to revisit how we might do it with uh, as a state-based model um, because that's the hammer we have. So um, let's try to cast this as a search problem. So uh, we're gonna start with initial state and this state is gonna represent not having assigned any provinces, any colors. And then from this state, we can take three possible actions. We can grab WA and assign it red. We can grab WA and assign it green. Or you can grab WA and assign it blue. And from each of these uh, points, we can take NT and assign it red, green, or blue, um, red, green, or blue, red, green, or blue. And you can see here that this is a search tree as the ones uh, that we have studied before. And at the very bottom of the search tree, we have a complete assignment to all the variables. And each assignment to all the variables is going to be labeled with either a zero if it is inconsistent. In other words, it doesn't solve the problem. Here, the problem is that NT and SA are assigned the same color. That's bad. Um, here's another complete assignment. This is also bad because W and A and NT share the same color. Here's an assignment that is good. And you can verify that all the provinces that are neighboring each other have different colors. And this is going to be denoted with a weight of one. So in general, each 
a state here represents a partial assignment of colors to variables. And at the end of the day, we can simply return any leaf that is consistent. For example, this one. So this is a perfectly fine way of solving uh, this problem. Um, and it goes to show how powerful these state-based models can be. Um, just to recap, the state here is a partial assignment of colors to provinces. And from each state, an action assigns the next uncolored province a compatible color. So what's missing? Why are we talking about this when we already know how to solve it using a state-based model? Well, the question is, can we do better than this? And the answer is going to be yes, because there is more problem structure. Let me say what I mean by that. So notice that in this problem, there's just a bunch of provinces. They need to get assigned colors. It doesn't matter which order I assign the colors. In other words, the variable ordering doesn't affect correctness, which means that we can not just stick with a fixed ordering, but we can optimize this ordering. And this is something that inference algorithm can do for us. And secondly, the variables here are interdependent in a, only a local way, um, and we can decompose the problem. So for example, here we see that um, Tasmania is completely separated from the rest of Australia, which means that we can effectively solve the two separate independent problems separately and just combine the solutions. And this is, as we'll see later, is, is great because it allow us to really um, speed up search. So variables based models um, allow us to capture these two additional pieces of structure. Um, variables based models are an umbrella term that include constraint satisfaction problems, Markov networks, and Bayesian networks, which all of which we're going to get through over the next uh, few weeks. And the key idea behind variable based models is we want to think in terms of variables. And in variable based models, a solution to a problem is simply an assignment to the variables. And so when you're modeling using variable based models, we want to set up a set of variables so that the solution is an assignment to the variables. And the decisions about how to choose the ordering of the variables and how to uh, determine which uh, variables to set first, this is going to be chosen by the inference algorithm. And the key idea here is that you can think about variable-based models as a higher level modeling language than state-based models. So here's an imperfect analogy from programming languages. So if you were just trying to solve a problem directly in an ad hoc way, that's kind of like writing an assembly. You just kind of go at it. Um, if you were using um, you know, C or C++, that's kind of like using state-based models. It gives you a higher level abstraction, which is powerful um, and allows you to save a lot of kind of headaches. Um, but variable-based models are kind of even a higher level language, like let's say Python, um, which allows you to think um, purely in terms of kind of the variables and the modeling and let the inference algorithm do more of the work, which is always good because then you can spend more time doing the fun stuff, which is the modeling. So um, I'm going to talk about first a constraint satisfaction problems. Constraint satisfaction problems appear in a number of applications, most of which revolve around large-scale logistics, scheduling, and supply chain management. So companies such as Amazon have to figure out how to put packages on vehicles and deliver them to customers, and at the same time, minimizing costs and meeting all those uh, promised delivery times. And so here, the variables might be the assignment of packages to vehicles, and the factors would include um, travel times and various costs. So ride sharing services such as Uber and Lyft also have to figure out how to best assign drivers to riders, and all of these are extensions of the classical vehicle routing problem. Um, here's another example from uh, sports scheduling. So the NFL, every year, they have to schedule which teams play which other teams and when these games are going to be um, held. 
And the schedule here should minimize travel times between uh, of teams. Um, they have to be a time where they fit the TV broadcast uh, schedule. Um, you want to be fair against uh, across teams and so on. So um, other problem, scheduling problems such as these also involve assigning courses um, to slots. So the registrar office has a number of courses that need to be offered every quarter and they have to figure out which classrooms to have these courses in and at what various time slots. Again, training out various uh, constraints like preferences and um, um, availability. So a final application of um, a constraint satisfaction problems is a little bit different. And this is uh, called the formal verification of um, circuits and programs. So say you have a computer program and you want to prove that this program um, is correct. Let's say the program is trying to do something like sort numbers. Um, so here what you can do is um, normally you would, let's say, test the program, design a bunch of test cases, run the program and see what happens. But this, how do you know for sure that it works on all inputs? So this is where verification comes in. You want to actually check that it works for all inputs. Um, so the way you would set this up is that you define a set of variables which correspond to the unknown inputs to the program. And then the factors encode the program itself. It's going to encode how execution proceeds line to line. And then you're going to ask the question whether there exists a program input that produces an error or an incorrect result. So unlike the other applications of CSPs where you're trying to find a satisfying assignment, in form of vacation, you're, you're trying to prove the that no such satisfying assignment exists because that would mean an error in your program. So here is a roadmap for the rest of the modules on CSPs. Um, so first, we're going to talk about the definition of a constraint satisfaction problem and factor graphs, do it more formally. Then we're going to give a few examples of CSPs. Then we're going to move over to inference. Um, we're just going to start by uh, talking about backtracking search, which is in the worst case exponential time, unfortunately. Um, but, but there are a number of ways to speed up search. Um, taking full advantage of the fact that we can assign variables in any order, we can look at dynamic order, ordering, which we're using heuristics to figure out which variables to assign first. And then we're going to look at a pruning strategy based on our consistency, which is going to allow us to prune out various values for each of the variables, which are not promising to explore, so that dynamic ordering can be much more effective. Um, but in case you're impatient and don't want to wait an X amount of time, but you're satisfied with an approximate uh, solution, you can also do approximate search. So here there's two algorithms, beam search, which is kind of an um, um, extension of the greedy search algorithm, um, but it's a little bit smarter. It's going to small, explore only a small fraction of the exponentially sized search tree. And local search is going to take an initial assignment to all the variables and just trying to improve it by changing um, one variable at a time. All right, so that's it for this overview module.